Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. This video is gonna be slightly different because it's not gonna be a running review, it's going to be a backpacking slash hiking review using the Nike Kyger 8. And a big reason for that is I went out to Yosemite National Park a couple weeks ago and did the highlight sleep, which is roughly around 50 miles. And for about 25 to 30 of those miles, I used the Kyger 8, including the climb up to Half Dome with the cable. So I kind of have a unique perspective using this shoe. Uh, and again, it's gonna be a little bit of a different review. Not so much running, more so backpacking and hiking because I got to use this in the Yosemite wilderness area. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, I didn't have a chance to preview this video and a small synopsis is my own. I also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing as it really helps me make these videos. Here we go. The Nike Terra Kyger 8 is designed to be a lightweight, more nimble, faster trail running shoe. It costs $140, has a four millimeter drop, and comes in at the 10.5 ounce mark, which for a trail runner isn't too bad. It's not the lightest one out there, but I think compared to some of the other ones uh, with more built up elements, it definitely is, I guess, slightly towards the lighter end of things. And compared to last year, the shoe does go up in weight, a couple tenths of an ounce, nothing too crazy, and we do get a brand new upper. And speaking of the upper, we get a really interesting two-layer design. The top layer is this open grid-like mesh with these massive holes, has a very durable feel to it, and then underneath that, we get an internal sock liner that connects to the tongue, so it's a fully gusseted tongue, kind of connects into an internal booty construction. This keeps debris from getting from your foot. However, the internal sock liner in this top thick open air mesh isn't connected, so I did have an issue where some stuff would get stuck between that top layer of mesh and the internal liner. I wish they would fuse maybe the liner to the mesh, but I realized that kind of creates a different feel, but I did have some instances where debris would get in there and they get stuck between this mesh that isn't connected, or the, th the thin liner isn't connected to that top mesh so it helps with breathability it's incredibly breathable just because there's maximum airflow again these holes on that top layer are incredibly wide and then the liner is very thin but this creates this gap where stuff can get in there and get stuck which wouldn't happen i think if they basically fuse that liner to the top layer of mesh the other thing I'll say is it does fit true to size, but it has a relatively wide toe box. I appreciated this because when you're going downhill, your toes kind of have room to not slam against the front of the shoe and it allows your toes to kind of sprawl out. I was very happy with the, the room of the toe box. That may be an issue for some people who like a more snug, more locked in fit. But for me, it worked well, especially while backpacking and hiking. Again, really wide toe box, maybe go down half a size if you want a more kind of locked or snug fit. But for me, fit true to size and I appreciated the extra room, especially in the width of the toe box. And moving to the top of the shoe, we get this plastic overlay section which acts as the toe guard. In my opinion, this didn't work very well. I wish they would add some plastic reinforcement or something maybe a little bit more sturdy just because it didn't do its job. Yes, it's better than just having a mesh section there, but I really felt every tree and rock that I kicked. The tongue, like I mentioned before, is gusseted. It connects to that internal liner, which helps keep debris getting directly to your foot. There are strategic foam blocks placed on the top of the tongue to help give you a little bit of protection from the lace pressure. And the lacing system itself is pretty darn durable. The upper kind of laps over around itself. You get some thicker material compared to the mesh on both sides. And I thought the lockdown was very good. It kept my foot well connected to the shoe, didn't have any issues. And because there is a wider toe box, I didn't feel like I was slamming into the front of the shoe especially when going down Half Dome. So if you've ever seen Half Dome, it's a pretty darn steep descent. And I was quite happy with having a nice lockdown of the foot and having enough room in the toe box. I never felt like my toes were slamming into the front, which I've had some issues with some other boots and things like that uh, when you're going downhill consistently. So going down Half Dome, I have video of it. I'll try to throw it on screen. I'll show you guys what that looks like. It's a lot better to have a wider toe box and a really good secure fit. And I think the Kyer did excellent in that area. Moving to the back of the shoe, you get some strategic foam that kind of wraps around the top of your foot and sits above your heel, kind of clips you in. I thought it was rather comfortable. The heel counter is pretty much non-existent. It's a very flexible heel. It worked well. I wish there was maybe a little bit more padding, but overall it was comfortable and I didn't have any heel slipping, no blisters or anything like that. The lockdown story of the Kyger 8, I think is a good news story here and I was very happy with it. The midsole features a Nike Air Zoom bag directly under your forefoot, and then the rest of the foam is gonna be Nike React, which I'm a big fan of. It's a lot balancier, has more life to it over a longer period of time compared to conventional EVA foam midsoles. However, the midsole didn't provide the most plush experience. I think the shoe looks a lot softer than it is. Your foot sits lower in the midsole, so the foam sidewalls kind of come up, kind of contains your foot, which is a good thing and 
part of the reason the shoe fits so well, but there's gonna be less foam between your heel and the ground. Now the forefoot, because you do have that air zoom bag, I thought it worked well. I was actually kind of happy with the experience. It's just a different sensation. Uh, you're able to bottom it out fairly easily, but it does give you a unique experience. I will say you can feel the sides of the airbag, so that's also kind of an interesting sensation. Uh, and this shoe is designed to be a faster, more nimble trail runner. So take that for what you will, and I backpack with it, which is me with 35 pounds, kind of putting a lot of pressure on this midsole. So it's not necessarily designed for that situation, but I did use it to scramble up half dome, down half dome, and then for the back half of my trail, which was pretty much all down Yosemite Falls, uh, just going downhill for a lot of the time. So I did both the climbing portion and then the descent version with this shoe, with this midsole, with both weight on and weight off. And even in both situations, it felt like a more firm ride, even when I was carrying 35 pounds and when I wasn't. So it's going to be a more firm, quicker, more nimble shoe, and I think it works very well for that. But for me, I think I'm like gonna go with a more, I guess a thicker trail runner next time. Um, so if you're someone who wants a little bit more minimal, more nimble trail runner for backpacking and hiking, I think the Kyger 8 works well. And if you want something a little bit thicker, a little bit more plush, I would probably go in a different direction. The outsole features 47, yes I counted, lugs that are about four millimeters in height. There is a rock plate, I believe, under the forefoot. I don't think it provided the best protection. I think it was minimal at best. I pretty much noticed every root rock I stepped on. You bottom out that air zoom bag fairly easily and it's a rather minimal shoe. You can pretty much just bend and twist this thing all over the place. So it's a more minimal setup here. It says it has a rock plate. I don't think it did the best thing ever. It probably helps better than nothing, but it's not a truly protective rock plate experience. Now, the other thing I'll say too is that I believe the rubber in the forefoot is softer than the heel area. The grip worked well for me in California in the drier climate. There wasn't as much, as much moisture out there. When we hit snow, I switched to my boots and then I pretty much switched back to my trail runners when it was a more dry setup because this isn't a waterproof shoe. The other thing I'll say too is I wish it was a waterproof shoe because then that would help with stuff getting inside. I'll talk about that later. But overall, with regard to the grip, it worked well for me when climbing half dome, rock scrambling, hiking and everything like that. I really didn't have a bad experience with the grip. I know some people say they don't like the grip here, but in California and Yosemite, over about 30 some miles, it worked really well. So those are the basic facts about the shoe. Let's talk about what I liked and what I didn't like so much. The first big positive for me was the lockdown and fit of the upper. I really appreciate how wide the toe box was, allowed my toes to sprawl out and kept them from jamming in to the front of the shoe. The lacing system, ankle and Achilles area, I felt very connected into this platform. Didn't have any sliding, no hot spots or anything like that. And I definitely did some serious elevation. Uh, I think it was like 12,000 feet of elevation going up um, and then a lot of downhill as well. So I was, I was doing some serious climbing, some serious descending, rock scrambling, all that. And I felt very connected to this platform while wearing, again, about 35 pounds on my back. The next positive I'll say is the breathability. You have excellent airflow here. Again, it's just a really open air mesh on top and then a very thin liner underneath. So the ventilation, I didn't feel like my foot was just sweating a ton, which was quite nice because when you're hiking, coming off a mountain, the sun heats you from one direction, it heats the rocks, then the rocks bake you from the other direction. So you're just baking coming off some of these mountains. So I really appreciated that my feet weren't super sweaty, super hot, and that the ventilation and breathability was excellent. The last big positive for me was that the Kai Great was very nimble. I was able to do rock scrambles, make quick cuts and turns, go uphill, downhill, and do all sorts of movements without any issues. The shoe doesn't feel bulky and just feels, again, very nimble underfoot. However, the shoe wasn't perfect and there are a couple things I would probably change. The first big negative for me was that a lot of debris was able to get in the top of the shoe and then get stuck between that liner and that top layer of mesh. I assume trail runners will have that problem, but while backpacking, you just put your feet through a ton of crap and foliage and all that stuff. And I found a lot of stuff to get stuck in the toe box because again, the top layer of mesh and then that sock liner aren't connected. And then it's kind of hard to dig this stuff out and get it out of your shoe. So you're just sitting there shaking, trying to get everything out of there. Um, so I wish they would maybe connect the two or figure out some kind of method to not have this large gap between the two layers of upper. The next thing I would probably change is the toe guard. I felt like it was basically useless. It's just a thin plastic overlay. I felt every rock and every branch that I kicked. I wish they would just bump up the plastic a little bit more, make it a little bit more strategic or something like that. I think anything would be better than this kind of plastic toe guard they have here. The last negative for me was there's a lot of ground feel here. Again, not the most plush experience, which is fine. Depends what you're looking for. But the rock plate, I don't know if it really did its job. I just felt every rock, every acorn, every branch that I stepped on. 
this is a more nimble, faster trail runner, so I, I kind of get that, but you kind of start to feel it after a while, especially if, especially if you're on a long run or hike, and I definitely felt those sharp rocks underfoot. Now, luckily in Yosemite, you're hiking on like a lot of like granite, and they basically have a lot of great trail maintenance, so it's practically just stone steps for a decent portion of it, but when you do get into some areas where it's just rocky or you know trees have fallen, you're stepping over branches, you really do feel that directly under your foot. So in my experience, would I recommend the Kiger 8 for a true backpacking experience? I would say probably not. I think this is a great day hiking shoe. If you're just doing a quick eight to 15 miles, I think this will work very well. It's lighter, more nimble, very breathable, has pretty darn good traction in my opinion for non-humid or non-slick environments. And it was just kind of a fun shoe to have on. Now, if you're using, you have a ton of weight on your back, you're doing a longer trek for multiple days on end, I would probably go with a thicker uh, waterproof option with a more serious toe guard maybe something a little bit more built up i don't you can go all the way to a boot i use both the solomon boots and then tigers on occasion i'll just throw them on my back because it's fun to do um, so it just kind of depends what you're looking for so i think this is a great day hike shoe a great um, potential quick trip shoe and then trail runners i'll let other trail runners kind of talk about the trail running function of this but when it comes to hiking quicker hikes rather than longer hikes just because this is a more nimble quick trail runner well, that concludes my review. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Kai Great and what do you use trail runners for? Do you use them for backpacking, trail running, day hiking? I think they have a wide variety of purposes. Let me know what you think. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. Catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.